she was missing, we didn't hear anything from her for a long time. From June of 21 till, till the beginning of this year, I was searching and screaming and looking and just going nuts trying to find her because it was just nothing. I had these things posted up all over the place. I was looking at all the food banks, all the places up from Hilltop to everywhere, even down in Olympia, I was calling all the police departments. My name is Carrie Gordon, and I'm the program manager for the Washington State Patrol's Missing and Unidentified Persons Unit. The tribal liaison who works for our agency reached out to my unit and said, how do I get family reference sample DNA kits? We understand that DNA is, is the flashy and the most advertised or getting the most attention. It can run upwards of three to $5,000 to process that DNA and get it, get it uploaded. And time consuming, you're talking six months to a year. At the same time, we looked up Bessie's record and we said, you know what, she doesn't even have dental on file. So that should maybe be step one. Any type of dental work you've had done, it shows up on an x-ray in, 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 in a metallic form and everybody's restorations are different and unique. You, you caught this one right here, look at this dip right here in there. That's unique to her. You know, no, nobody else is going to have a restoration that looks just like that. My name is Kyle Tanaka, I'm a dentist. So what we're looking at is dental records, basically dental x-rays. This is the missing person that was in the NCIC system, and these are the missing person's radiographs. The dental was uploaded into, like I mentioned, the, the NCIC computer, um, and the coding generated a cross-match report, which we get every single morning. So taking a look at the missing person's radiographs to the unidentified person's radiographs, and we get a match. And the very first record on the cross-match report was an unidentified out of Washington State and he called me um, while I was out of state in a hotel room and said, we have, we have a match. Um, and I asked for the missing person's name and he said, uh, Bessie Handy. And I said, I just sat down and I said, oh my God, Bessie. But the key to that is that the information was in the system. Uh, if these records are not in the system, there's no way to possibly make that match. But I called our tribal liaison, Patty, because I know Patty had a really close relationship with Bess Bessie's mother. And I told her, I said, we identified Bessie as, as un unidentified out of Seattle. It was just heartbreaking, but it, it, it solved the answer to my question of why isn't she, why haven't we heard anything? It's important work, but at the same time, it's frustrating that she had to be there for so long unidentified. But we were happy that we were able to give her mom some, some answers to where her daughter was. Sorry. So I spent almost two years with hope, and then that hope was crushed. But the answer was given to me, finally. She was in a, a homeless encampment fire in downtown Seattle. The other victim of the fire was ID'd right away. Uh, Bessie remained unidentified. The dental processing in general is such a uh, misunderstood. They can make an identification um, from, to a missing and unidentified within minutes and it's no cost to law enforcement in the state of Washington. Dental records are not antiquated as we hear quite often. So Bessie's case is a good example of the fact that the system does work. They still work. They are still successful. If she was already gone and I'm out here running around like a wild chicken. I'm not the only one. There's a lot of people out there that, you know, wish they had an answer. How has your life changed since February 2021 and June of 2021? It's not the same, you know. Her life has been broken off, but, you know, I just, I just have hope that, you know, I'll see her again someday and all the torment and everything is going to be gone. You know, she's in peace, you know.